Hey y'all, Matt Massive Beers here. Unboxing time, a little bit of unboxing time. So uh, hopefully this is going decently um, as far as audio. Video, the whole nine, um, like I said, doing the whole retooling thing, doing the whole kind of any beer review thing. Ripping on some Two Roots IPA right now. Been very impressed with these guys. So if you are into such things, then um, yeah, go check them out. Anyway, beer mail. I haven't been doing a ton of beer mails. A couple of reasons, you know, beer mails kind of slow down, ebb and flow throughout the season and different times of the year and things like that. So I've been doing a ton of them um, because I haven't had a ton of them to do. Um, but, um, you know, I did one the other day. Uh, Steven, uh, the uh, incomparable Steven, sent a bunch of beer mails to me and a bunch of the beer tubers and stuff like that all around. I just did an unboxing of his. That was pretty cool. This one I actually knew was coming and it's from Tavor. It's another Tavor unboxing. If you don't know who Tavor is, it's basically a beer service. Um, it's not like the web shop to where you order a bunch of stuff that they have in stock and then they pack it and ship it. They kind of um, have a bunch of stuff on their website that pops up randomly at random times or, you know, every day, every day or two, there'll be something different. And um, then you say i'll take one of those or two of those or whatever it is and then slowly you build a box over time and then eventually you go okay i want to ship yeah i think you have like 30 days or something like that to ship by the time you um from when you start building your box and then you can just build your box and kind of pick what you want to be in those boxes um i haven't done that actually um uh, all the divorce stuff i have gotten was either from viewers putting boxes together for me or from the service themselves every now and then the service reaches out and they say, hey, man, we'd love to send you another box. See what you think. I usually say, why not? And then they send me off a box of beer. That's what happened this time. Um, and every time they do this, I do an unboxing. Typically, I don't do them live, but I'm going to be doing them live just because it's a little bit easier for me, especially since I'm not drinking beer right now. I'm going to unbox all these. These will go out in the fridge, and I'll, I'll review a couple of them uh, come February time. Um, but typically what happens is, is one of the representatives, or more often than not, it's a specific rep. Uh, Ella has been the one I've been dealing with uh, quite often as of late. Um, actually, the last like three or four boxes has been the same person. Um, she, uh, or they, or them, or him, doesn't matter. Um, they, um, they, uh, uh, ask what I want. And I tell them what I want. And sometimes they are very receptive, uh, from what I ask. Sometimes they're not. Now, granted, the last time they sent off a box, I asked for a bunch of smoked beers. I know a lot of breweries don't do smoked beers. So for me to get a whole box of smoked beers is kind of unrealistic. But the one before that, they're actually really kind of on point. It was like low ABV crushers. Um, so we have this one. Let me grab it. Oh, we'll put it up there. This one, um, which is, um, I said semi stouts. I said semi stouts and barrel aged stuff and Belgian darks and stuff like that. Basically seasonal stuff. I wanted stuff that was um, uh, from like uh, you know the stuff you would drink around Christmas time, basically. Uh, and um, they sent this box off. I have no idea what's in here. We're gonna go through it. We're gonna see with what. And I review, not necessarily a review, but I talk about the all the aspects of the mail service. So you know, one, they contact me, ask me for a box. I say yes. That part of it is different from what most people deal with. Um, like I said, the typical MO from what you do when you do stuff in Tavor is you build your own box um, and you pay for whatever beers you pick. And then once you get to the box, once you get your box to where it's full enough for you um, to ship it, because I believe there's a flat shipping fee of 15 to 20 bucks. I actually forget, I should have looked that up, but it's easy for you guys to look up. Um, and then you can say, hey, ship me the box. Or once you get to like, I think it's 30 days in there, like, okay, we're going to ship your stuff. So they sent me off a box. And one of their big sticking points, and this is one I like to really cover for you guys, especially with uh, me being on the East Coast. A lot of my viewership is from the East Coast, even though I get a lot of international stuff like that, is shipping on these. Um, it tends to vary widely. And I, and I think I have a reason behind that. Um, I think they use, and this is coming from someone that understands logistics when it comes to business quite well. Um, I think they use a base um, shipping service. I don't know if it's UPS, FedEx, um, you know, DHL, whatever they use, they use from where they're located to a local 
courier service, not even like a local, like regular UPS delivery service. I'm pretty sure all of it, and from my experience, that's been the case. It's a local courier service. And that courier service is basically gonna take that and end the trip. So it's gonna go to a hub somewhere, um, be delivered basically. It's like UPS gets delivered to the hub for the courier service and the courier service kind of shuttles it to your house. And that's where that kind of disconnect and, and the timing kind of difference kind of comes. Now, previous to this, it's always been the same company. Um, and they've been pretty decent as far as shipping times go, but sometimes they're a little bit, whatever. Um, this time took quite a long time. So what usually happens on these is that L will send me an e email saying, Hey man, we're sending out the box. And like the day that they write that email, I'm going to put this off to the side for now because I need to read my phone because I have all my stuff on my phone and my phone's right here. Um, and they're like, Oh, they're like, Hey, we sent off the box um and you'll be getting it so cheers enjoy i got that email like i want to say like maybe 10 days ago and i was like okay 10 days ago you know i'm probably gonna be looking at it and they say i think they're 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 not guaranteed but they say most people get their stuff around eight to ten days they actually shipped it quite earlier they actually shipped this box on the 30th and i just received it today so you're talking about 18 days it took so it's almost double or it is. It's double what they typically say the beer is going to take time-wise to get to you. So that's why I do this. So you guys can actually understand that sometimes maybe those numbers might be a little bit off. Now, a bulk of that lands on this carrier. This is a new carrier, or I should say courier, that they use this time. I'm not going to name names. Um, but they received this package actually 10 days ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? They received it on the 8th of uh, December whatever i'm not drinking beers right now you know what i mean so i'm not like worried about getting it monday rolls around of this week i'm like you know you're talking about you know it's been you're going on almost a week since they've had it i was like you know what? i'll shoot them an email and be like hey is everything okay because this is a place that's like not even 40 minutes away from where i live and it didn't move it, it, they received it in they checked it you could see the progress and what's your what's going where and it hadn't moved so i sent an email monday i was like yeah you know hey you know, I've, I've seen you guys got it on the Wednesday. It still hasn't moved. It's Monday. What's going on? Nothing. Crickets. Uh, so I was like, okay, screw it. Was it Thursday? No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, I decide to call them. I said, I called them. I spoke with a very lovely woman. Um, she's like, let me check on this. I'm not sure what's going on. She calls me back. She's like, I don't know. Give me like 15 minutes. I'll call you back. 15 minutes. Like almost on a note, she calls me back. She's like, we got it. We're really, really sorry. We're not sure why it didn't get delivered. We're going to, we have it scheduled to go Friday. You'll get it on Friday. No doubt. I was like, okay, fine. Today rolls around and I'm like, should I call them? At this point, I just like, I'm curious. Cause I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, he told me I'm getting it Friday. It's not coming Friday. I know it's the holidays, but it's not UPS FedEx. It's, it's a courier service. So I, I called, call, left the message. I was like, hey, you know, I left an email and no one responded. I called, blah, 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 blah. I did the whole Karen thing. And um, and I get, didn't hear back from them. I was like, okay, maybe they're on holiday for the weekend. I don't know. But um, it just showed up at like, what, an hour and a half ago, maybe? Uh, just kind of showed up. They pulled up in their own car. It looks like, I think it might have been a woman that I actually spoke to on the phone. No, that can't be true. She's out of New York. Anyway, someone dropped it off my house in her car. So we have it. So here we go. So it took twice as long as they typically go. So um, their boxing is usually typically excellent for this stuff. We'll dive in the action. You know what? I'm going to leave that right there because it's going to be easier for me to do this stuff. Actually, we'll jump into the comments. We have Clayton um, chiming in. He was in the uh, the uh, X-Men show for the NerdSense guys last night. He was like um, the uh, MVP of the of the chat in that last night. He says, uh, cheers, Matt, drinking a new one H2O. LOL, went a little hard last night watching the Nerd Sense Live, and that's what he's talking about. We had a really great time. If you missed the Nerd Sense Live special, go check that out over on Nerd Sense. It's just Nerd Sense, all one word. Type it in the old YouTubes, and a bunch of us hung out for several hours, just kind of chilling and getting ripped, because I'm getting ripped on non-alcoholic beer, because that's how I roll. So, what's going on, homie? Mm. So let's actually open this sucker. Let's see what's what. I cleaned, and when I say cleaned, I mean it. I cleaned the F out of my studio today, like, really crazily. So I don't know where any of my stuff is, my knives or anything like that. I got these scissors, so they don't have to do. Uh, and we'll see what's what. I'm really curious to see what they sent off. Instead of both of this, 
not going to be beholden to reviewing all of this, but I will um, put this in the old fridge in the barn. And we'll get to these in due time. So we'll see. Oh, there's a decent amount of stuff in here. Now, they did talk very at length about Christmas holiday boxes. So I don't know if this is a representation of what they send off for this Christmas holiday box. So we'll see what's what. Um, you've been crafted a beer box. Or you've been gifted and curated a craft beer box. Each beer... Uh, you unbox is certified independent from unique craft beers around the world. To Matthew Dapkins from Devorah, we hope you enjoy your Devorah beers. Cheers. That's pretty much what they send off every time. They have a little bit of Devorah kind of ver, you know, like a swag or ad, adverts, whatever you want. So there's a bunch of cans in here. There's a bunch of bottles. Let's dive in. We'll see what's what. Um, okay, first things first. We have, why don't I remember the Brewery of Avant. So Vivant is a Belgian-based brewery. I believe they're out of, I want to say they're out of Michigan. Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is their Wizard Barrel Ground. This is a Bourbon Barrel H Quad 2021 release, 10.8% alcohol by volume. So definitely hitting a mark on those winter seasonals. Um, on the side here, it says, Brewed once a year, the special quadruples age in bourbon barrels. The alcohol content of the quad pulls the bourbon, vanilla, and char oak character out of the barrel and melts it all together with the caramel richness already present in ale. Uh, we've been wood aging beers since we opened in 2010 and 2021 vintage of wizard burial ground is yet another stellar version of this legendary beer now just for full disclosure i think i've reviewed this beer before to be honest with you um i haven't i don't remember i remember drinking this i think this might have came this might have came courtesy of Ewart. uh correct me if i'm wrong Ewart. avant let's see what we got um, yes, I, oh, it's been a little bit, actually. I reviewed this last in January 30th of 2018, so you're talking, by the time I review this, it's going to be four years ago. Um, this is, like I said, the 2021 version. This is just a bit over a month old. This will get reviewed. I'll try to review it. I'm not going to guarantee any reviews get done. Um, but I really do dig what Vivant does. Never been a huge fan of their label design, to be perfectly honest with you. Um... Just kind of old schooly kind of mentality brewery wise, but their beers have been quite good. They're very much Belgian based as far as their kind of ethos and what they want to do as far as, you know, beers and breweries and all that kind of fun stuff goes. So we're off to a pretty good start. Let's see, we got a number two. Um, we have SB. Who is SB? Stormbreaker. I think of her. No, I'm thinking of Thor. I want to think of Stormbreaker. Um, uh, Stormbreaker Brewing. It's a winter coat, winter warmer ale brewed with blackberry. That sounds absolutely delicious. Yeah. That sucker. I'm not going to say... I mean, the label's not horrible. Honey malt lining. Ooh, honey malt. Fuggle. Fuggle. I'm the review of this beer. <laughs> Sterling hops. This honestly sounds like a... What's the ABV on here? Give it to me. 7.5. It almost sounds like an old ale. Like an, a pseudo-English barley wine with... um. Oh, man, we got spam in the chat. That sucks. Um, man, what do we got here? Words. Winter, winters change, and so does the coats. Um, this one offers the same great taste with new features, including blackberry. It has the same great insulation of chocolate malt, special bee, and it's always stuffed with fuggle and sterling hops. Sweet and orange peel, sweet orange peel and 100% delicious honey malt lining. So it looks like they're dealing with the... Um, uh, chocolate malt, special bee, um, and honey malt. I like that combo. And then those fuggles and sterling, which are two of my favorite hops, especially when it comes to kind of malt driven, kind of like English style beer. So this has me super, super interested. My interest is peaked. These guys are out of Portland. Guys, gals, or anything in between, I should say. Out of Portland, Oregon. I just, re uh, interviewed, um, um, Jeff Hallworth from Beervana, um, Portland native. That was a really good uh, podcast. Very fun to do. So if you're looking for a podcast, check out. I would implore you to go check that out. I, I, I put it in the feed here, uh, video-wise, but go check out the, uh, it's called a podcast, on the Apple Podcast or whatever you may find your podcast at. So there you go. Nate Shaps, chiming in and saying happy holidays. What's going on, Nate? Cheers, homie. Uh, we have a little bit of Wayfinder. I've had some Wayfinder, not a ton of it. 
Um, this is their Time Spiral. Munich-style Dunkel. So, yeah, I'm digging on that. Everything here has been less than a month old. Double decoction. That's how you do it right. Double decoction, Munich-style Dunkel. Subtle roast and biscuity malts with a long conditioning process. Sectionally mature. They want you to do the little... You see there, they want you to do the little dimple. Dimple. I have one of those glasses. They want you to do one of those dimple glasses. We will We will make sure we, we drink this sucker out of that one. Again... I am not promising reviews will get done of any of these. Because that's how that's how things are changing. People are like, how is your channel going to change? Well, I'm just going to review less and do whatever I want. And people send beer and might get reviewed. There you go. Mm. What a life, huh? Ooh, defensive pancake. This is a porter with maple syrup and vanilla. I'm not going to lie to you. I love that name. Defensive pancake? I mean, besides the obviously, obvious, like, football reference of a defensive pancake. I think of, like, a very aggressive, like, uh, something's up and I need to uh, protect myself, but I'm a pancake. So, that makes me laugh. Porter with maple syrup and vanilla. Divine Barrel Brewing. I've never had anything from these people. Charlotte, North Carolina. And it's 6.8, so that sounds nice. I do, I, I do like that label. In kind of a hokey, kind of jokey kind of way, but still. Defensive, defensive pancake. I dig that. I dig that. And then we have uh, Jordan Stevens chiming in, saying cheers. What's going on, homie? Mickler. Little Mickler San Diego up in his piece. It's 10.5%. What is this? Beer Geek S'more Shake. Oh, man, I haven't had Beer Geek in a while, so it's a s'more shake. So it's a lactose, but it's a milkshake. Let's see here. Oatmeal stout made with vegan marshmallow, graham crackers, vanilla, and natural flavors added. 10.5% alcohol by volume. Mickler, San Diego. Um, 722. Okay, so this is probably by far and away the oldest beer that I've ever gotten by from Tavor. So you can see right there. And we can do the little born on stuff so you guys can actually see what's going on. 722. So you're talking 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12. Five times. Five months old. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. You know, 10.5% beer. Sure, it's lactose based, but it should be able to hold up. Can. I don't see any kind of leakage or anything like that. So hopefully it's not oxidized. So I don't mind this. I mean, listen. They sent a box on spec. It's not like I paid for this. That's a thing. Would I be angry? And that's the question I would I would ask myself. Would I be peeved if I got this from them? If I ordered it? I don't think so. And this is the reason why. If I picked up... If I ordered this from a web shop and they didn't give me a date on it, I think I might be a little bit like, eh. eh. But I think they kind of know... I think you know the dates and stuff like that when when you order this like this is probably available in august and it's just still there so yeah i don't know i'm not gonna dwell too long on it um nate chiming in uh saying shipping sh shipping he's shipping he's not shipping he's sipping on a ju juice project finally got my hands on some treehouse gotta say that they are definitely beers uh there are definitely beers from hot butcher that i've enjoyed more chicago putting out fire and you know <sighs> I think both, while they can bisect each other similarly when it comes to beers, I, I kind of think they're a markedly different hazies. Um, and while Hot Butcher can make really tasty beers and ones that I would think would be better than Treehouse and vice versa, they're different and they're different in their own right. It's not like you're like, they're exactly the same kind of hazies and then one's better than the other. They're just different. So... I've had my fair share. If you watch the channel, you know I've had my fair share of Hot Butcher. So, I would agree. They make fire. So, there you go. Mm. Oh, man. 8.30 already. I'm going to miss the beginning of um, the Patriots losing to the Colts. What else we got going on? Hop and Frog. The last Hop and Frog beers that I've had have been amazing. Uh, I'm looking at you, uh, Froggy Claus. Peanut butter and hazelnut caramel cho uh, caramel chocolate cake stout. Stout with natural flavors. 8% alcohol by volume. On a side here, we read, 
Uh, it says the rich, decadent character of this gourmet cake flavored stout will fill your senses with friendly, familiar flavors and aromas of yesteryear. Take a trip back in time and enjoy the memories that peanut butter, hazelnut, caramel, chocolate cake stout will invoke. So they're telling me it is going to bring me back to my child. I will hold you to that. I will hold you to that. Um, Hoppin' Frog. I want my child up, up in this piece. Vertical barcode we always enjoy as someone who does barcode compliance for huge corporations. But man, I'm pretty sure that sucker is hard to scan. That's a tiny barcode. You're talking at less than an inch. Um, that's me doing all kinds of weird judgy stuff. Uh... <laughs> so this is Best Buy. This is curious. I'm curious about this one. You're probably not going to be able to read that. Maybe you can. It's actually kind of hard for me to read, so I'm not sure if I'm going to angle it there. Top says Best Buy, October 20th, 2024. They're saying this beer will last three years. That many adjuncts in a 10 8% sound is going to last that long? I think Hoppin' Frog's hoping this, or not hoping, is saying if this sits on a shelf, we still want people to buy it. Such is life. We got some bottles. I'm going to leave the bottles for last. Got a couple more cans. And we'll see what's what. Nate saying, yeah, good point. Hot Butcher tends to lean uh, more sweet. Yeah, everybody's a little bit different. And I like Hot Butcher and what they do in their uniqueness. Street Side Brewery. Never heard of these guys. I actually kind of like this label. It's a little kooky madooky. I think, you know what? I think I might be lying. Did I get a Street Side beer from Tavor before? Uh, but it's a little beaver dude riding a, riding a little tractor. Tractor. It's called a tricycle. Um, it says, we are, we are, we on doodle. This is an imperial brown with schnickerdoodle coffee. Okay. On the side here, it says, doodle bob. Imperial brown ale with snickerdoodle coffee. A hey hoy manoy. This chocolatey snickerdoodle brown ale is a perfect fall beverage from vibing at a tailgate or a holiday party. We're running a little behind on the label design this time, so we decided we'd let Bob take a stab at it. Hey, thanks for stepping up, Bob. 7% alcohol by volume. No date. Ohio. What's around on both sides at high in the middle? Ohio. And they are based out of Cincinnati. I'm curious. I'm very curious. I love coffee, but Snickerdoodle coffee sounds fantastic. So, yeah. There you go. I like that label. It's growing on me a little bit more and more. Um, let's see. Oh. Oh, black is beautiful. I haven't had black is beautiful in a while. This is 8.82% alcohol by volume. Black is beautiful beer by, obviously, Weathered Souls. It's a Weathered Souls Black is beautiful. How about that? I thought it was going to be from somebody else, but it's not. It's actually from them. Because it is brewed, um, it's brewed to sport justice and quality for people of color. But if you actually go here, it says produced and canned by Weathered Souls. San Antonio, Texas. So this is, I don't think this is the base, is it? I Maybe it is. I did the base. Um, Ron, Tony, Jim, I forget who sent me the black is beautiful i'm sorry for being that guy um but um yeah i'm curious now i'm curious there's no date in the can so i don't know if this is like the one that was originally brewed or they rebrewed it i'll have to go on weathered sold's uh website and, and uh try to try to figure that out now jordan steven chimes in and he says what's the cost of a tovor box it there's it's not like you buy a box it's not i think they have do have like set boxes you can buy especially around the holidays but it's not like you pay okay give them this much and they send you a box of beer it's the way it works and i explained it in the beginning but i'll do it again real quick is that basically every day or two they put beers up and they said we have these beers and then you go i'll take one of that one of those one of those or none of those and the next day or two they go okay now we have these and they go i'll take one of those one of those one of those whatever and then when you fire, buy your first beer. So the beer will be whatever the cost of the beer is. So it's like whatever. It's like three bucks for this can or five bucks for this can, whatever. A clock starts and you have 30 days to build the box. I believe it's 30 days. Again, I could be wrong. The website will tell you. Um, you have 30 days to build a box. And then whatever you put have in your box by the end of that time 
frame gets shipped to you. Conversely, you could be like fill it up real quick and be like after five days, be like, oh, I, it's I want all this stuff. Just ship it to me. And I believe it's a flat rate of fifteen dollars for the shipping. So it's like if you see one beer and you really, really want it and you say, I'll take four of those and click ship. And then so you pay whatever the four beers are plus the 15 bucks shipping or you fill a box up to the brim, the max, and get crazy packed and then that's 15 bucks. So it depends on what you spend. There's no like kind of flat rate fee or anything like that. So uh, can wise, we have three cans left. We have a shorty in here. Uh, this is not it. This is double dipped chocolate, cinnamon, and cherry. Evil Twin, New York City. I did not know they put these in the box. Um, this was canned a bit over a month ago. And this be a 10% Imperial Stout with chocolate, cherry, and a touch of cinnamon. That actually sounds really good. I like Yep Spears. Um, Evil Twin Brewing Company. Distributed by 12% Mount Vernon, brewed in Queens. And it was canned on 11.04. So you're talking about, you know, a month, a month and a half old. Exactly, actually. Not too shabby. I do like, I do like their cans. They just take a photograph of something and put it on the front. So I do do that. And then we're on the can. Last one, this little itty bitty sucker. Yeah, it's, it's a Borscht the Crusher uh, from Hoppin' Frog. Okay. It's been a while since I've had this beer. This is a quadruple oatmeal stout, Russian imperial stout. Stout aged in bourbon barrels. 15.7% alcohol by lamb. So this has a little bit of chutzpah to it. On the side here, it reads, it says uh, bourbon barrel aged uh, chorus. It's not Boris. I said Boris. It's chorus. Uh, chorus, the crusher, takes our quadruple oatmeal imperial stout Um to a whole new level, high alcohol content of this beer extracts wonderful and assertive flavors and aromas from the barrels, adding great depth of care of complexity and leading to ultimate satisfaction. It's kind of pornographic. Um, curious is the July. Oh, they're saying July twenty eighth, twenty twenty four. The Best Buy it is. So apparently, Hop and Frog is just like our stouts are good for four years, three years, regardless. So it's from July. I find that as a bonus. Now, you know, where is this other one? Bum, ba, dum, ba. The other older one. This one from Mickler. You know, I kind of want a little bit of time on my bourbon barrel aged beers. And not that, you know, seven, six months is a long time on a beer. But for something like this, it can just round those edges just a little bit. So I'm really kind of I'm super. Look at how tiny that thing is compared to a 60 ounce can. It's just so cute. It's not even the same thickness. It's like thinner. <coughs> Sorry, I had to sneeze. Um, it's thinner. <laughs> I'm not going to sneeze again. Maybe not. We'll see. So we're on to the bottles. We have three bottles. Ooh, this bottle's sticky, so it's going to be good. Oh, pretty bomb. Uh, it's it's like, it's covered in schmutz. You can see there's like, it's already like something broke and got like beer all over it. I love it. Um, this is Barrel Age Moose Boots. From Prairie, it's not a Prairie Bob. Barrel Age Moose, moose Boops. Uh, moose Boops. Moose Boops. That sounds like if I, like, boop, boop my, uh, boop my kid with something. Uh, it's a Barrel Age Imperial Stout with maple syrup, toasted almonds, and vanilla. And vanilla. I've always liked Prairie's bottles. The goofy little kind of art design that they do and all their stuff. It's always been fun. A little turntable. A little Techniques 1200. For those playing all at home, there's two techniques right there, two turntables, and there's a microphone right there. Um, you can't really see that. How about we put that up there like that so you guys can see what's going on? Ooh, I'll only break it. Um, Rhino Puffs saying, "Looking good, man. Thank you very much, dude. Very appreciative." I'm always dead sexy, but for some reason, maybe I'm a little dead sexier. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, okay, Listerman's. I can see this is uh, actually this looks like it's it says Tavora. So they must have made this for Tavora. I'm kind of curious. Uh, is this a collab? Because that's very much Burlington Brewing vibes. That pinstriping. Uh, Tavor and Listerman. That's the collab we have going on. It is their white chocolate mocha discrepancies. 
Um, this is an Imperial Stout with raspberries, peanut butter, white chocolate, mocha, and lactose. 14% alcohol by volume. Listerman's, is it, are they in, yeah, Ohio. They're just across the river in Ohio. I've had a couple of their beers. And I'm really curious to see where this one kind of lands. Um, they don't really say much about the beer other than that. And the most curious thing about this is, one, like I said, it's very much kind of Burlington Brewing kind of pinstriping. But there's something under the label, like there's debris under there. See that little, uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. You can't. Oh, there you go. See that little thing? There's something under there grain a flea maybe there's a uh, i don't know maybe the bottle's broken and it's leaking out but it can't get out of the way i don't know i might uh pick at that and find out what's underneath there when if and when i do a review if i don't then i'll just do it on my own last but not least i'm super excited for this one because it's waxed not that wax means beer is going to be the best let's put these down before they break not that wax means beer is going to be great but it's a certain kind of wax on this sucker where is it I feel like uh, I'm, in, I'm in Flash Gordon right now. I'm trying to figure out. Because this is red wax. I don't know who this is from. Let me, uh, let's do this. Let's play this game. This kind of wax is the wax that I really find a lot of beers that I really, really enjoy um, use. Like it's the, the it's the Damolin wax. It's the Kunin wax. It's the, that reddish kind of old school wax you find in a lot of breweries. So Stormbreaker. Okay. It, it, and this is what I'm talking about with the wax. It's just that dirty red, like paraffin-y kind of disc. Like this is the th look at how thick this wax is. You know what I mean? It's insane. Um, this is the oh, it's a barrel aged winter coat. Okay, we're doing side by sides. Barrel aged winter coat 2021, uh, limited edition version of a 2021 winter coat. There it is. Um, Bull Run Whiskey Barrels is basically the difference. 8%. I mean, honestly, Fuggle and Sterling, 7.5. So there's an ABV bump. So I'm assuming they changed the beer a little bit to hold up to the barrel. I mean, it's essentially the same label as this right here. Um, just, you know, just a little variance on it. The coat's a little different. Stuff's a little different, but there's... This is kind of has this kind of very intriguing side-by-side -side thing going on. Not gonna lie to you, kind of excited for this one. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here. I'm, these are all not going to be reviewed. I'm gonna let you know that right now. That's that's kind of the whole shtick. And what I'm trying to do is not review as much beer, just do a little bit more in-depth, long-form stuff. I think I'm gonna have to do that side by side. I think that. I think all these should be reviewed, so who knows what's going on. But anyway, thank you very much, for for setting these off. I asked for stouts and winter-based beers. I asked for Belgian-based beers, Belgian quads. Winter warmers kind of foot that bill. Um, kind of your seasonal kind of just, you know, warm me up. Warm me up. It's winter time. They kind of delivered on this one, so I'm not going to sit here and say they didn't because they certainly did. I'm excited. So there you go. A little bit of a Tavor unboxing in the books. Um, hopefully you guys, look, first things first, let me know if you've had any of these beers. That's what I'm very, very curious about is if you've had any of these from, you know, the Stormbreaker, either the bases, you know, the Prairies down to the Listermans and the whole line. Let me know if you've had any of these suckers because I'm curious to see what you guys think. That's the whole point of this is kind of open conversation and and uh, see what you guys think of this stuff. So this is a really cool kind of box of hopeful goodness. So there you go. So jump into the comments real quick. See what's what before we sign off. We're already at a half an hour and I'm pretty sure the Patriots are probably down a couple touchdowns already and I really want to watch them lose. Um, uh, Nate. Uh, says, I really miss the 8-ounce Imperial Style Cans. Me too, man. That's the favorite vessel for me. The only thing I don't like about the 8-ounce um, Imperial Style Cans is the cost. They tend to be, you know, price per ounce tend to be quite a bit more. Um, if you're going to give me a stout, because um, he says 16-ounce can of 14% beer can be a bit much on a Tuesday, and I wholeheartedly agree. It can be a bit much on any day. But the one cool thing about bombers, 
or even 750s to a certain extent. I don't know if any of you y'all did this stuff, but I would cap them or or cork them. You know, I have corks that I would just like and open like I would purposely go out of my way to like open a 750 or a bomber of a big beer uh, on a Thursday or Friday leading into the weekend, and then I cork it, and then the next day I drink a little, next day I drink a little, next day I drink like it spread over a couple days, and that kind of made sense to me. You're dealing with a six ounce can. There's really, I mean, you could there's a couple ways you can kind of finagle it with a little bit of press and seal and stuff like that, but it's really hard to kind of not have those cans go flat over time. The bottles, believe me, they actually hold up quite well if you cork them correctly. Um, so I almost like those as opposed to the 16 ounce, sometimes 18 ounce or eight ounce cans because eight ounce is great. It's the perfect amount for me, but it's like, okay, here's our, our eight ounce can for $7 and be like, okay, well I'm doing the math now. It's kind of expensive. You know, when it works that way. So that'd be my only kind of, kind of poo-poo nitpick on that thing. Uh, Dan chiming in saying, man, I need to go to the store and buy some beer. Wiser words have never been said, my friend. Um, so there you go. Thank you very much for Torvor for sending this off. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this unboxing. Like I said, uh, off of the beer beers till we hit February. So the good thing about it is these will all keep so that's not going to be an issue. Um, I will try to get to at least, I would say a third of these will get reviewed. A quarter to a third, half of them feeling frisky, depending on what I have going on. But there's some that I would really, really, really kind of, like I said, that side-by-side -side on, uh, on that, um, why am I blanking on Stormbreaker? Well, let me, let me do that too before I leave. I said, if you've had these, let me know. If there's one of these specifically that you're like, hey, I really, really, really want you to review this one. You can only choose one. Let me know. I'll move that up in the queue. How about that? So hopefully you guys enjoyed this unboxing. Hopefully you're enjoying some good beer now. You know, it's a nice Saturday night before, uh, before the old Xmas. One week to go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this unboxing. Hopefully uh, you're enjoying family and friends. Hopefully you're enjoying your life, baby. Hope we'll see you next time. Yeah, there you go. Cheers.